Things are coming to a head in the yard. With constant train delays and our operator flow going on holiday, we have a big concrete pour to do on Saturday, but we have to make finish. It's all done in one day. And if things weren't tiresome enough, we now have giant tires to change on both the loading shovels. I'm Daniel Nisash for Weekly, episode 95. This episode of Asheville Weekly is sponsored by Spry. You are under us, mate. I had a chat with my solicitor. Back roots it is. That can go in. See if that fits. <laughs> Nothing really excites me. Get in. It's a rather large job. I'll do a bit of it. David will do a bit of it. He's a bit of a topper. If I dig this out, sometimes it's a good thing. It came in the wrong size. Everyone has come together. The future's bright. The future's Asheville. Monday morning, I'm in the yard. We are doing a bit of work on the Volvo tipper. We need to change the kingpins on the front axle. One side's already been done. You can have a look at this on the floor. This is the old kingpin that's just come out, but the other side is being very stubborn. We're trying to get it off now. And as we're trying to get that off, we're also trying to get the material off the train, which has just arrived. What we also need to do is find an operator for next week and the week after because Flo's going on holiday. So we're talking to the company that used to do it for us previously. See if they can get someone in for two weeks while Flo enjoys his summer holiday. We're still struggling uh, to get uh, the hub off the other side on this Volvo tipper, but we should manage and get it moving. So we managed to get it off on this side. Had to strip all of that off to get at it. There was a tiny bit of play on this. You're allowed some side to side, but you're not allowed any up and down whatsoever. So just to be safe, we're gonna get this done now and get this lorry ready for MOT. And here is our lovely new kingpin, what we're gonna build up, and then that can go in. And uh, this lorry should be ready for test after we take a proper look around it. Speaking of tippers, guys, a long time ago, I sold our um, old Volvo tipper on a template at auction click here to see a video where all my old lorries got nicked off me for next to no money well it has appeared in guyana let's have a look at that yep it's good to see that the um, lorries have gone to a home and they're still out working on the road but what's bad to see is that they all got nicked off me for a cheap price which i wasn't happy with but what can you do hey uh, <laughs> i might be speaking too what's the matter i might be speaking too soon but come on david tell us the good news there you go, hold this. Tell us the good news. The UPS might have found the parcel, the, the green screen. UPS may have found KSI's green screen. Yeah. So today um, we're finishing off with paneling and we're fitting the uh, box for that up into the ceiling either today or tomorrow. And it's a six week order time and David doesn't want to confirm. <laughs> Not 100% because it's on the, on the way, but it's delayed. It's on the way, but it's no longer under investigation. Hmm. I believe they have found it. So but they just got a little bit better. <laughs> Heading back around to my office, I had a chat with my solicitor. There's some documentation that I needed to fill in of the two flats which I am selling. The sale is going through at the moment. I believe that the person buying it is a cash buyer. But if they weren't, I'd have some advice for them. One thing we can all agree is being mortgage-free is one step closer to financial freedom. Let me introduce you to Sprive. Sprive uses smart technology to help you get mortgage-free faster, saving you thousands of pounds in interest. It's the first app of its kind that's regulated by the Financial Services Authority, and it's not linked to any particular mortgage lender. Now, paying off a mortgage early is important to me because it reduces the financial stress on my life, and it gives me extra money to focus on the things which are important to me. 
With uncertainty around interest rates, paying off your mortgage earlier saves you thousands of pounds in interest. What's great about Sprife is it automatically saves the perfect amount without disrupting my lifestyle because it's based on my spending habits. Sprife automatically sets money aside each week based on your spending and calculates how much you can afford to overpay on your mortgage. You can then choose with one tap to pay this amount to your lender or withdraw if you need to. If next month changes and you're a little more flush, you can also make a larger payment. Sprive helps you visualize this impact by showing you how overpayments have changed the percentage of your home that you own and total debt and the timescale left to pay off. To get started, all you need to do is download the free app. Yes, that's right, I said it's free. Then link your bank account and Sprife will be able to locate your mortgage in minutes. What I love about this app is the information it gives you which helps you make informed decisions. Sprife can show you the percentage of your home that you own and how much you can save by putting an extra three pound versus five pound towards your mortgage and how many years earlier you're on track to pay off your mortgage than you would have been. Because you're all serious and watch Asheville Weekly, Sprife are willing to donate five pound to help get your account started with the code Asheville. However, this will only be active for seven days, so don't miss out. Click the link in the description to download Sprife or scan my QR code. Now let's get back to the video. Tuesday morning. And I'm in the car again. And I'm on the way to a 7 a.m. meeting, which it looks like I'm gonna be very early for. I have more good news, like the good news about KSI's green screen yesterday, in that the uh, wallpaper, which has been chosen for the basement salvage project, that wallpaper is going to arrive on Wednesday. So the basement salvage is there or thereabouts. We have to put wallpaper on a wall and we have to put some uh, perspex in, but the cinema itself and everything else is working. A little bit of programming that Will's gonna do with the Control 4. KSI's house, we're doing the final bits. We've done all the fabric walls, but we've got some intricate stuff to do, which will take probably till the end of the week. Then Con's got to come in and do the table. QPR, the work is progressing really well. So on a work front, we can see the end of the tunnel on those projects. Now, we have another large project, uh, what we've been pricing and going through, which a QS has been working on. You've seen me in a couple of meetings. Now, that price should be ready for us Thursday, and I'm meeting with the client next Tuesday. Now, the reason I've asked a QS to price that job is because of the value. Now, any job up to about 750K, I'll price myself. I'll do a bit of it. David will do a bit of it but a job of this value, which is a lot higher than that, and I want a document which is quantified, which gives all the quants. So basically, if we take things out of the job or we put things back into the job, then we have a price which is accurate. And then when we're trying to get paid on the job, if I produce a valuation, I can put percentages against the prices I've already put in place. So the payment that I require is accurate. And then if the client gets someone else um, to verify the work we've done. They can also use that document and we can all work from it. Unfortunately, the train has been canceled. Yes, very unfortunate for you that the train montage has been canceled, but hopefully we will have another train this week. But we're still relatively busy in the yard. We're having a lot of collections and as it comes in the gate, it's going straight back out the door. 6.49, I'm just gonna gather my thoughts in the car before I go into the meeting. Hopefully this meeting goes well. I'm talking about the project you saw me at a few weeks ago where we had the archeological find sectioned off and we dug a couple of holes and we were looking at the conditions in the ground. So I'm just meeting with that company now to decide how to move forward with that job also. The future's bright, the future's Asheville. Out of my meeting, it went very well. Uh, ball's in my court now, I need to send them an email on a cost uh, for some additional um, work we need to do on the site before we can take any um, material out of the job. I'm heading to QPR for another meeting. QPR Stadium doesn't open till 8 a.m. and it's now 8.05 and I'm nearly there, which works perfectly. I just had a conversation uh, with the legal team on a document they were reviewing for me and they gave me some feedback. We checked through and I'm happy with what they've said. Well, I pretended I'm happy with it. I assume that the legal team are working in my best interest because as we all know, I am more practical than contractual. They are now gonna send it over to the other side's legal team. Hopefully we can reach an agreement and I can put it to bed and sign it off this week. 
that's the plan anyway. Morning, how's it going? Any ideas why they just dash my sign in the lobby like that on the floor? <laughs> last week we're moving the seats so we could uh, fit the handrails in the new standing area well the seats are gone and now it's time to fit the handrails off now to see how we're getting on with the toilets So the taping and jointing is done. Dudek's just sanding it down. Dudek, I didn't know you were into decorating. I guess that is. <laughs> so we've done the reveals around the windows. We're just gonna finish these walls and then we're gonna do a mist coat and then the guys are gonna come in. Uh, they're gonna do the lino on the floor. We're then gonna do the ceiling and then we'll be ready to put the toilets and then cubicles in place. It might be difficult to tell, <laughs> but we made a lot of cables in the sealant redundant. They weren't doing anything. So we spent the day yesterday getting rid of them. And uh, now we're gonna start putting plasterboard on the ceilings and start this refurb. And I can share it with you from this time lapse up here. Just taking a look at the uh, owner's box, which is next door to the Asheville box, <laughs> which is nearly done. Looks like uh, if I went to Tenerife, this man would go to Tenerife. He's a bit of a topper. Finished the QPR, back on the move again, heading to KSI's. Well, I was about to leave. QPR called me back in and apparently the sign it came in the wrong size and it can't be used waste not want not and I asked if I want it I tried to fit an anaconda arm from Volvo in here the other day I was unsuccessful so now it's time to fit an Asheville signboard in my passenger seat see if that fits uh, well it's not gonna work so I'm gonna ask Dudek to put it in the van Here we are at KSI's now. <laughs> I'm really excited about this room. and I don't know how much of it I can show you or not show you because I'm filming today on Tuesday, but this video is coming out, not Sunday, the Sunday after, but I'm not sure if this main video will be out yet and I don't want to spoil it. What I can say is that Everyone has come together and I'm so excited about this room. It's a really small room, but it's working really well. If the video is out, I'm about to flip the camera and you're about to see this room, if it's out. Now I'm gonna flip it. If not, I'm heading back to the yard. Just trying to get back to the yard and navigate my way through the traffic. The day has gone really well. Just as I left KSI's, I bumped into David and David said, UPS are delivering the green screen tomorrow. Get in. Things are going our way. Right, turn right and Lee Bear have left. turned up in the yard and they are about to start work on the 926. So it's all happening. Oi. So I just got back in the yard and I've seen this van pull up and I see a police officer jump out the van and he comes walking up to me and calls me by name and I thought to myself, oh my God, I'm in trouble here. I'm under arrest. <laughs> but it turns out I'm not. Show us why we got show us why. Look at that. That's what I'm talking right. about. Show us underneath. Look at it. Oh, go on. Thank you, Rachel. There you go. Hey. Rep it, <laughs> He's repping. <laughs> Metropolitan police are repping. <laughs> And, nice there, to meet and, you. And, and there I was thinking I was getting arrested and a man was in the area well, safe popped in. I haven't in. told you why I've, I've come to see you. You are under arrest, mate. You've got no insurance. 
What? No shoots in your car. Of course I have. No. Just in the workshop, having a look at the work on the Volvo, but I'll go through in a second. Um, but like I keep saying, there are advantages and disadvantages to having your business out in the open. So Ara pointed out a comment to me on last week's episode, episode 93, what said that we owe Kevin the Ram Man money. Now I thought to myself, hold on a minute, do we? So I start panicking. And I start checking the system. I get Shane to check. I get uh, Julia, uh, Sinead, we're all checking the system, nothing. I'm calling Kevin and he's not answering. So I'm panicking. I'm thinking Kevin don't want to speak to me because I owe him money and I haven't paid him. So I call Kevin's office. And they said, well, no, you don't owe us any money. Where? I said, where's Kevin? They said he's not in. So today we speak to Kevin, we speak to the office, they check their system and they were fully paid a very long time ago. So I don't know why people feel they need to write stuff like that. That just shows me that I should never trust people who are trolling. Um, if you're watching this and you feel that I owe you money or you feel that you saw me drive down a road and I owe someone on that road money or any other road in the UK or any other country or if I should pay someone for something which is my fault, please let me know in the comments as well because no doubt there are people there who just like to say things which make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Having a look at the Volvo, we had to change one of the track rod ends. The movement was none at all. However, you can see the rubber is gone on the track rod end. So once the rubber has gone, it means you can't use it anymore. So if we flip around like this, let's have a look. There's our new track rod end, looking good. Try and get this from a different angle. There we are. While we were there, uh, we also changed an ABS sensor. Um, so the lorry is good to go. Uh, we're going to shake the steering in a bit, see if there's anything else we can see. But this lorry is there or thereabouts ready for test, just needs a bit of a wash. Time to go up to my office. The time is 1.29 and I have a zoom at two. Can you believe they said that? Dio Kevin money. Take it again, roll one at a time. Wednesday and I'm in the yard. The sprinkler is very powerful today and it's completely drenched the A, which is dripping with water. Now we have the loading shovel tires at long last. Now it's time to get those tires changed. We're gonna have front tires on both the 586 and the 566. We're also um, giving the Volvo a proper wash down, the Volvo tipper. Click here to see a video where we customise these. When I bought them, they were white. Um, and then we're going to drop it round to Volvo for MOT. Got 
got a Zoom starting at one o'clock. The time now is at 12.38. At the moment, everything we're doing is subject to repricing, not because of us, but because of all our suppliers. We've been trying to price this job for a long time. It's a rather large job, but all the prices we got for windows, air conditioning, any of the carpentry, everybody said the quote is only valid for 30 days because of the way things are changing and how volatile the market is. So if I had a quote 40 days ago, by the time I submit to the client, that quote is no longer valid. So we've had to make our quote only valid for 30 days and we have to continually ask everyone um, to reprice. It is a Zoom. In the past, I met the same group of people and we had a meeting here. Now before COVID, I had never done like a Zoom meeting ever. Maybe once in a while we did a Skype with people if they were international, but Zooming with people in the UK, that's something new for me. Sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. When you meet in person, you know, you have camaraderie, you can have an agreement, you can get a feel for the meeting. Generally on Zoom, uh, when people are Zooming from home, they're sat down with a shirt and tie and they've got their boxer shorts underneath or they've got their nighty if it's a lady. Personally, I prefer the meetings face to face, but it does save a lot of travel time for people who have to come here. I'm being selfish because every time I want to meet and I want the meeting to actually happen here, unless it's on the site. There's no time to eat now. I'll have to eat a bit later. We had a tiny little emergency earlier. I had a call from the client and the glass was being fitted on the stairs at the basement salvage. So Friday jumped in his car and he managed to just get there as they were lifting the glass in place. But of course I can't show that to you. I was about to go upstairs to my Zoom, but the wallpaper for the basement salvage has just turned, no it ain't. It's correct. No it ain't. It is. On the photos, it looks different. It looks... On the photos is what he ordered. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, we, uh, we've got a sample on site, so it is... No, 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 no. That, that ain't it. It is. It's not. The one I saw looks white. Gre uh, you this? Can. Yeah, but that's completely misinterpretation of... Really? Yeah, so You're sure that this is it? 100%. 100%. This is it, definitely? 100%. Oh, David. <laughs> because when I... When I look at the photo and the sample, it was like two different products, but the sample... Itself. So you saw the sample at his yeah, house yeah. and that was it? Exactly, yeah, we got it inside. Because that and that are two different things? No, that's wrong. Ignore the photo. Ignore the photo, what he said. Yeah. Right. This was a flash or something. Okay. It's good. It's good, yeah? Yeah, 100%. All right, so we have the wallpaper. All right, so we have the wallpaper for <laughs> Basement Salvage, which looks nothing like the picture. But David was at the house and he saw it. Apparently the flash must have made it look a lot lighter. Did the green screen arrive yet? Um, no, it's not even on the way. I just checked it. So last update we've got it from yesterday. But well, I spoke with UPS and they promise it's definitely coming today. They promise it's coming today? Yeah, but I can't see it on the system when it's shipped from... <laughs> As they say. Promises is comfort to a fool. And I am that fool. So you're on the Zoom at yeah, one o'clock as well, yeah? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay, fine. All right, thank um, you, David. Yeah, I don't know why they took this cost for electrical. It started going quickly for it. Uh huh. Because uh, what they have in provisional sounds, yeah, but it's, it looks huge, <laughs> the cost. Yeah. Electrical material. So it's clear the work in the bathroom is priced, but the fixtures and fittings in the bathroom are not priced. And, and, then, and then we can dissect the cost and have that cost in there. I, I will tell you what I think for the install. That master ensuite is taking two people five weeks. I don't know if you disagree, David. I would say the other bathroom, if the wall finishes and everything uh, in already, I'd still say two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. It's Thursday. Thursday? Yes, Thursday. And I'm on the way to the yard. I'm not in the yard yet. I uh, just had a conversation uh, with a friend of mine about a couple of moves they're doing um, to try and make some money. And we had the discussion and I was giving my take on it. So I think I'm gonna share my take. I was brought up in the UK, my family are West Indian. Making money consists of, you need land. So that was from way back when you need land or you need a house. That is what, that's what it is. You have to buy a house, you have to have land. It doesn't matter if we're starving, we have land. Doesn't matter what's going on in the world or the world is about to end, we have land. Doesn't matter, we have land. I understand 
um, why people thought like that because of the circumstances and what was going on. And then when we came out of that, a lot of people said, uh, you need property, you need property. Which I agree, it's good to have in your portfolio. You need multiple streams of income. But the days of thinking that you're going to buy a house and you're gonna have 15% uh, yield, those days, they're gone. They're completely gone. That is not gonna happen. You are not going to buy a house and get rental income that's gonna pay the house off in 10 years, unless you're extremely lucky or you get the house extremely cheap. And you are not gonna buy a house for let's say half a million pound, spend 250K on it and sell it for two million quid. Those days are gone, it's gone. The market is oversaturated. If you wanna make money doing things like that, you have to be really at the super top end of it, like uh, in prime postcodes, or locations which are really sought after. And if you are lucky enough to get a property around there, which is very unlikely, you also have to be lucky enough to get a property that's had no work done. And then you have to spend considerable amounts of money on it. Let's say you buy a house on Bishop's Avenue, or you manage to get a house in Mayfair. You buy a house for a couple of million quid. If you have access to those type of resources, <laughs> then you spend a couple of million quid on it. Now, while you may get a purchaser for that house and you may make a couple of million quid, you don't know how long you're gonna be sitting on that house. The group of people in the market for houses in the region of like eight to 15 million in, in prime postcodes, they are not waiting around and they have the resources and they have the connections to have probably found that. And if they wanted it, they wouldn't have given you a chance to buy it and for you to do the work. So what I was trying to explain was that the market and the world has changed and we can't apply the same tactics that people were applying 20 years ago and even 10 years ago. And I'm not being disrespectful because at the time it worked, but the world has changed. Let me give you an example. Uh, pension funds, now they don't say they're gonna buy buildings and redo them. Pension funds search for income producing assets. So they understand they are playing the long game. If you're gonna buy a flat and you're gonna put tenants in it and you're gonna get, I don't know, between a four and an 8% yield and you say- Right, I know that I am sitting here for 25 years till this mortgage gets paid off and I'm gonna deal with tenants complaining and boilers breaking and sometimes people not paying and having to redecorate and having to pay service this charge and having to do this. But you know that in 25 years you have a couple of them and that's your pension and it's an income producing asset after that point and you want to hand it over to your kids or your family. That's cool and that will work. But if you want to make money now, today, and you want to make money and live and you want to move and shake, that is not working for you. It, w it will not work unless you are extremely lucky. You have to use other ways to try and make money in this market and you have to use your money or have partners and use their money. For instance, if you look at what Andrew Southern is doing, he's getting plots of land or he's getting buildings. And years ago, he would have gone for residential builds. But now instead, he's taking the risk and going for planning for student builds. So when you create a 40 story tower, you're completely on, on, on a different playing field. So you have pension funds who wanna buy it off you. Um, you have international investment firms that wanna buy it off you. You have venture capitalists. They all wanna buy it off you because they want to buy the income producing asset if you choose to not keep hold of it. Or you need to come up with product or a service that people require. There's loads of ways that you can make money in this new market, but you have to take your mind off the previous mindset. If you have unlimited resources, you can play the long game and you can play the short game. If you don't have unlimited resources, you need to try to play the quick flip game and you need to do your best with what you have. Why are these people in our yard? And you need to do the best, with, why are these people here? and you need to try to do the best with the resources you have, and you're gonna to have to think of new, innovative ways to generate, these people had seen me, to generate revenue and to make your money and other people's money work for you with products and services. And how are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? It's a strange request. Okay, a strange request. I could do strange requests. To be continued. I have a meeting with a bodybuilder at 9 a.m. So while I talk to manufacturers of the actual cab and chassis, I'm talking to companies um, who could possibly make the bodies as well. The actual bodies are very intricate. 
and there's a lot of stuff I like on it. What I like is when we actually designed our first bodies, I then saw a bunch of other lorries with the exact same body on it, the body that I designed when I went to the manufacturer. We then went out to everyone and said, this is a great body to have, but you know, <laughs> I don't mind that. Don't mind other people having great bodies on their lorries as well. I have that meeting and then I have a credit control meeting and I have to do a watch through of weekly episode 94, I believe, because I'm filming 95 now. Let's get to it. We're not a fan of that system and that's only because if a driver pulls it out and it, because it comes out at an angle, it doesn't even come flat. So yeah. he pulls it out and then he starts talking, gets yeah. his cab, drives off, you've, yeah. got, you've got a meter of steel sticking over your near side. So, but we need to come up with something. After my meeting talking about bodies, I had a meeting for one of our aggregate suppliers and they're saying that the price is going up. And you can see over here, we've got a cement delivery and they've also sent us a letter saying on the 2nd of August, the price is going up also. So the price of cement and the price of material and the price of um, diesel and probably the water bill, they're gonna put the price up as well. I think we're gonna to need to have a price increase on the concrete again, unfortunately, because we can't absorb those costs. But a long time ago, I dare the video team to find this cutaway of me saying this. A long time ago, I created a document and I put in the price of cement, uh, the price of material, I put in all the prices, and then I did percentages per mix of how much was needed for each mix so we can calculate exactly what it costs us and what we should be charging. So I just use that document now, and all I need to do is change a few figures and it calculates everything. So I put the hard work in before, and now it's working for us now. Yesterday, the very long meeting we had, uh, pricing a job with a QS, I had a look at the price where it came out, and I thought to myself, oh, it is the right price. It's an independent QS price in it, but because you have the money to spend, it doesn't necessarily mean that you want to or you should. So I am now asked the QS to prepare two prices for me. One, to get the house done with all the whistles and bells, and another, which completely takes out all the things which you could say are extra and are luxuries. Now, I know you could say I could put it in one document and put things which are provisional sums, and if they strike that out, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna present it in the most simple way possible. Here's the house with all the whistles and bells. Here it is to have a nice house and everything you need done. I want two separate documents side by side so it makes it easier uh, for the client to have a look at them. All the tippers today are on a um, big shift. So we're moving as Doug Ballas from a job. Uh, I think a lot of the lads are down there and uh, they're shifting it and they're moving it back up to here. I don't know how, how it's going on. I haven't had a chance to speak to Terry. And... And sorry to waste your time. I think that's about it. I'm in my office. I'm looking downstairs after a watch through and we have a delivery. I think uh, this is the delivery of KSI's green screen. We hope this is it. Patiently waiting at the window. It looks okay. What did you mean by it's black? No, no, the box. The, the, oh, the box. The box, oh, the trims. Oh, I see, said the blind man. But the screen is green. <laughs> Good, that's what I mean. <laughs> David is just gonna measure it now. And if the measurements Two, four, four, are correct. Four. Okay, let's check. I need to check the paperwork. It's Friday and I'm in the yard. And would you think we have a problem with a train? I think Network Rail like to walk the track on a Friday, so they've taken a possession and it means that our train is blocked in. The issue with that is that flow is meant to be going on holiday. It's now 11.15 and it looks like the train is now about to go to Colnbrook and turn around and then back in here. So if flow has to leave, we spoke to everyone and they said it's something that Network Rail are gonna have to pay the cost of. But 
My issue isn't the network rail are going to have to pay the cost. My issue is that I want the material because we are busy. Uh, we have four trains uh, booked for next week also. You see before, I mentioned I got a jury summons. Uh, well, I completed all the paperwork and I let them know my schedule, what's coming up, exactly what it is. I shared a couple of contracts with them and they have now moved my jewellery service to August 2023. I obviously hope I'm busy. But if I'm not, maybe I'll be in a position where I can fulfill my obligations. If not, I'll have to let them know my schedule again and we'll see what happens. Hopefully this train goes around and backs in and we get it offloaded. Just got off another Zoom and uh, I told you about the job where I'm giving people two options rather than having uh, loads of provisional sums. So here's your house completed and here is your house completed with a whole bunch of other madness, which is nice to have, but you don't need it to have your house complete. David spotted something. Had he not spotted this, I'll admit I missed it. So in the two jobs, I said in one of them, we're going to leave your existing underfloor heating system because at the moment we can't see there's anything wrong with it. And in the other option, I was ripping out all the underfloor heating system, getting rid of the screed, putting in a new system and then having to re-screed. So because we're not doing that, our demolition costs came down, uh, the amount of grabs of hardcore, that came down, uh, our prelims and the time to do the job came down, and the cost for the um, plumbing, that came down significantly because we weren't doing all of the underfloor heating. But David spotted this. On one of the floors, we have to put a huge steel in. Now the foot in for that steel is something like 1400 by 800 by 1400 deep. If I dig this out in the middle of their ground floor, I'm gonna damage the underfloor heating in two of the rooms. But I've already said I'm not touching it. So now we've had to put a price in place to repair this underfloor heating and re-screed the area. Also, we're gonna tile the ground floor. However, if I remove some of the walls, they're gonna be areas of this where the floor is going to be damaged. So we're gonna to have to screed repair in those areas. Then we're gonna to have to put a self-leveling compound and prepare the entire area once again to be tiled. But if I was putting new underfloor heat in, I would have re-screeded it and in between the structural alterations, I could have repaired the floor in that area. So well spotted David. Also, as part of this job, I took out the loft conversion on one of the options. And on the ground floor, there were additional two pads which were supporting the weight in the loft. If we're not doing the loft, we don't actually need those anymore. So again, the costs come down. So a lot of this is gonna come down to the client, how he wants to live and how much he wants to spend. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna make it clear, some of this work, you can't say, okay, I'll just do that still later. You can't do that. Certain elements will have to be completely done now. Infrastructure stuff like having electric blinds, home automation. Click here to see a video where we do our entire house home automation. Stuff like that, we can wire it in the wall so the infrastructure is in place. So in the future, we can upgrade. But there's some fundamentals and infrastructure work and moving steels and structural alterations that have to be done now. You don't have to do your front drive now, don't have to do your back drive now, don't have to do anything like that. That can all be done later, but there's some stuff in the house that has to be done. So I'm glad that was spotted. The QS is working on it now, and I'm very happy that I used an independent QS. Because while I have a good relationship with the client, the client is going to take this and they're going to take it to someone else and say, what do you think of this? So everything is quantified so the client can check it. They can check all the rates. They can do whatever they want. They could even take it and show the price to someone else. Maybe they want to do their due diligence. But I'm happy with how that is going. One second. Let me check if this train is here. <sighs> the train is not here. Let's look at the car park. Flo's car is still here. We're going to have to let Flo go soon. And Flo will be going on holiday, but at the moment, there is no sign of a train. We're just editing the home cinema video. And there's a little bit in the home cinema video. We try to keep it different in weekly. Weekly is more vlog style, fly on the wall, joking, messing around. But we try to keep the standalone videos like you're going to see Jay tripped over my trainer. Um, <laughs> we try to keep 
those videos separate and they have a different feel to them. So there's part of the standalone video where Will is working on the large control force centralized lighting system and he's talking in the video and we're not sure if it's a good fit for the main video because in that video we didn't actually introduce Will. So if he just pops up in the middle of it and starts talking, it may not be a good fit. However, we are not going to shag Will Shook You Productions. We're going to let him have his moment. Let's have a look at a little bit of the work that Will did. The drones will be going on this wall. So what I've had to do is I've had to fish beads all the way to here and then down through this wall into the lighting panel. So far there is only eight cables for module one, but I need to fish another eight cables through, but I've run out. And this is for the, this is 2.5mm, this is power for module one. Then we'll have another 2.5mm feed for power for module two from the consumer unit, and each module will be on its own RCBO. Well, we got the train, but Flo had to leave, of course. He had his holiday booked. Now Terry, jumped in the L860 and he was going to give it a go to offload the train. Now Terry can do it, he's capable, but I stopped him because I said, Terry, while you're trying to help the damage that can be caused and like the health and safety hazard it is, um, even though Terry does know the difference between right and wrong, the man just wants to get the job done and he's Asheville through and through. Now, because the train got here so late, the train is now stuck here. And the train is stuck here till Monday. Now, the company that we used to use to offload the trains, who used to provide operators, they still haven't got back to us whether they're going to have someone here to offload it. So we're now in a position where we have a train in the yard, which is fully loaded. And we have four trains booked for next week, but now that will be free because this train is staying here till Monday. So what we may do, if we haven't heard from that company uh, by the end of today, I may bring some grab drivers in and I may bring grab lorries along the side here like you've seen us do in the past at someone else's job and we may use grab lorries and we may offload all the wagons on this line. We may offload these and then work out what we're going to do on Monday morning uh, with the other few wagons that are on the secondary line. It's not ideal but one way or another we're going to get the job done. It's uh, 2.37 and uh, I'm going to go into the video room, do a couple of watch throughs. I know normally on a, on a Friday, people are like, yeah, the weekend is coming. But for me, looking forward to Saturday. Saturday's a good day in the yard. You can catch up with so much paperwork and it's that bit more quiet. Saturday morning, I'm in the car. Uh, had some good news come through and we do have an operator for Monday to come and offload the train. So we now uh, do not need to do it today with uh, grab lorries. And anyway, <laughs> that would have been a struggle because we don't have enough drivers in. However, we do have a large concrete pour on of about 120 meters. Um, I got up super early this morning. I went for a swim. And now before I go to the yard, I am going to head to the site and just have a look what's going on. Good, mate. I'm getting an education today. <laughs> Quite driving one of them fully loaded is not like driving a tipper. Hello. I'm on site till. Just like smashing it out, mate. We're 55 meters in. Yeah, 50 there or thereabouts, yeah. We're 55 meters in. It's 10.05. Doing well. I haven't seen um, the two volleys uh, both pouring into the same boom pump, but doing quite well. Ollie's smashing it. Got to do it, mate. Got to try. It's a 24 meter boom pump, and the guys are casting the slab, which is 350 mil thick going really well. It's good to get this poured on a Saturday because then it's dry for Monday morning so you can crack on with work. All the boys are delivering, it's going well. And we have a cement lorry in the yard um, ready to 
to fill up the uh, silo as soon as the boys get back and reload. Planned well and smacking it. Down in the basement with the lads as they pour. Um, unfortunately, I can't hang around until the pour is finished, but we do have a long way to go. But the guys are doing well. Hopefully, I can get you a picture of this slab when it's complete in a couple of hours. <laughs> I've been told by the man down there to move around and get some better footage. I'm ready! I've been told um, that the lorry uh, you saw past me on the way here that one has already left the yard and it will be back here in 15 minutes so there should be no gaps at all in the pool <laughs> that's mad <laughs> I passed the concrete lorry on the way to the job with Andrew Southern following behind him. One thing that you can say about the M25 is that it is definitely consistent. Back routes it is. However, this is not gonna help the concrete pour. How's it going down there? That's no, going all right, man. They're, they're doing well. I'm just back at the yard now. Nathan's left. Lucas is there. Another one's loading cement deliveries here. We're doing all right, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing all right. I'm, I'm pro if um, we get stuck, I might have to go out and drive and obviously save the day. Obviously, you know what I mean? But... It's not a great shot. Let you know in a while, yeah. You definitely weren't giving a van puncture. No, that definitely wasn't me. Sound all right. I'll send this scrap it, All right. Cheers, man. Once again, like the issue we had with Travis Perkins a few weeks ago. It's fine, I'll call you back, it's fine. No, 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 I need to speak to your manager, please. Somebody's called um, a tire company and tried to order a puncture repair on our account. I, just, I won't even go into it, you know what happened. And here is our cement delivery, waiting to offload to make sure that no matter what, we can get this job done. While I'm over here, I uh, actually, keep meaning to take a couple of pictures of our water tank because I believe it's on its last legs. At the moment it's just working with gravity because we've got 7,000 litres in the water tank going through it but I think I need to take a couple of pictures of the plate on it and order another one and I won't use it yet but I will just have it there on standby. So when it does go there's no waiting around and someone can disconnect and put on a new one. How are we doing mate? Yeah, I'll, I'll move for you right now. Thanks, mate. I'm not good at it, but... <laughs> are, you, are you done? Are you offloaded? Hey? Are you offloaded? I've finished, yeah. I've got, they've got all they can do. Uh, have you still got some on? Yeah. How much? Like no way. Yeah. yeah. But wasn't it between 11 and 12? Yeah, it was. But no but one tells me that. Can't, can't you hang around till 12 then? No. Because we're... No, I've got to be back in the drive now. I've got a full, full tank, but... I know, but they're going to charge us for that nine ton. Maybe yeah. not, because it's their fault. Okay, fine. That's a bit of a problem. Uh, the cement delivery is going away with nine tons still on it. If you have a look at this here, we are full. And I'm asking him to wait till 12. We ordered this delivery between 11 and 12. And it is 11.06. So if you get here at 11 and you start to offload, we've got lorries coming back. So that nine ton, if three lorries, three lorries load, that nine ton will be offloaded. But they turned up at seven o'clock this morning and they've had to wait till now. So I just hope that um, if we send an email, they realize that they sent it early. What's well, not our fault. Anyway, let me get a shot of this um, water pump. Scrape this off. Oh no, that is not what I wanted to do. I've taken the label off. No! Another one just arrived back in the yard. About to reload. Full of cement, even though we could do with another nine ton. Wagons are here. If the driver could have waited another ten minutes, then we could have taken another four ton, because that lorry takes four ton of cement. Ah! The 
challenges on a Saturday. Thanks again to Sprite for sponsoring this video. Guys, make sure you check out the app if you're looking for a simple and effective way to overpay your mortgage. Link in description. Just past lunchtime in the yard, the concrete lorries are all going out uh, to do their final loads and the pour should be done. Um, we were told the pour was 120 meters. It was more like 150 meters. Big job, glad we could get it done on a Saturday. I had a call a little while ago um, from someone who I know quite well, who I work with. They were really excited and flustered and they said, right, we've had this great opportunity, this great job come up, let's go and look at the job. And I was like, right, what am I looking at? Where is it? Who's the client? What's the budget? Are there any drawings? No, there's no, there's no budget, there's no drawings, there's no plans, but we have to go there and look at it and tell them how much it's gonna cost to do what they want, which they don't know. And, um, and I said, right, well, I'll support you as best I can, that you can call me, but I'm not going to the site. And they said, well, why? It's a great opportunity. And I said, right, why is it a great opportunity? And they said, well, this is the postcode. I was like, right, very affluent postcode. And they said, and uh, if I tell you who the client is and what they've done in the past in, in construction. And I said, right, so what have they done? They told me what they had done. They told me who they were. And then they said, uh, yeah, and uh, they've got an unlimited budget. And I was like, Right. Unfortunately, I'm in a position, I've been at this so long. Do you know the amount of times there's been a great job that I'm going to benefit from so much and there's no budget and it's in a great area and it's so wonderful and basically they're doing me a favour letting me build it. Time has passed so much and I've been involved in so many projects and I've learned so much that unfortunately nothing really excites me. There's not really a job that comes in front of me and I'll be like, wow, that job's so exciting. I can't, I can't wait to, come on, Nathan. <laughs> come on, mate. Nathan's got back from the poor. <laughs> There's never been a job and I think, oh yeah, this is a great opportunity. And it's not, don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't want the job. I do want to do the job, but the trouble is I know how it works. So the first thing, when you tell me this person's done a lot in construction, the first thing I'm gonna say is no problem. If they've done so much in construction, where is their tried and tested architect, where are their engineers, and where is their multiple building contractors that they've used? And if they don't talk to any of them anymore, I'm gonna to wanna to know why, I'm gonna to wanna to know what went wrong, and then I wanna know why somebody who's in construction, who knows everything about construction, why they are asking people to go to a job, dangling a carrot, asking them to price a job with no plans, no specifications, no engineer drawings, and they don't even know the size of the building. It doesn't make sense to me, and it happens time and time again, and people think that, I don't know, they think that I don't wanna do the job because I think I've got too much work, or it's not that. It's that I know how this is gonna go because it has always gone that way since the beginning of time. I am here to offer help and advice to my friends and business associates that I've worked with, and friends of friends even. If you want advice, if I can keep me on the phone for half hour, I can give you as much advice as possible, but I cannot go to a job with someone who doesn't have drawings, doesn't know what they wanna do, has no information whatsoever, and go and price a job. Do you know what it takes to price a large job? You're talking about paying an architect to draw it, you're talking about constant meetings with the client to decide exactly what they want, then we're talking about having structural calculations done and structural plans if we're going to have structural alterations or we're going to dig a basement depending on what we're going to do we're going to involve the council we're going to try to get planning when we've done all of that we need to employ a qs so they can quantify the entire job we're going to quantify it because they want to know exactly what's going to cost and of course of course it must be the cheapest quote they could possibly get lord forbid a building contractor make a living it must be the cheapest and the best. Any other industry, if you walk into Bentley, the best is the most expensive. You walk into Rolls Royce, the best is the most expensive. But in construction, the best must be the cheapest. You must do the job for nothing. Anyway, that process, depending on the size of the job, that could be between 20 and 35 grand to price the job. And let me get this straight. I must do that for free because it's a fabulous opportunity for me and then you can take my work and give it to someone else who says, yeah, I'll do it for three quid cheaper. Unfortunately, I can't do that. 
and I don't mean to be negative. To be honest, things are on the upper Asheville and I think that we have turned a corner and I have fantastic plans for the business and for myself. And to tell you a little bit more, you know, I haven't been sharing a lot with you. I am gonna be dabbling a little bit in TV and film. I did say that, TV and film. Hopefully I could tell you a little bit more later. And I have plans for the business that is gonna mean the company is going to grow and you will know Asheville nationally if you don't already. And that's it for Asheville Weekly, episode 95. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see an Asheville video you may not have seen before. And click here for last week's episode, which was number 94. What a fabulous opportunity. I can come and price your job for you so you can decide that your mate can do it for cheaper. Yes, please, where do I sign for this fabulous opportunity?